I'm working on restoring this uh, Sony radio and I may need a frequency counter, counter to align the circuitry so I decided to build an active probe uh, as a frequency counter I bought this popular PLJ8 LED uh, counter that you can find online so that's going to be my that, that, that this is going to, to be working as a frequency counter and then uh, I decided to build a active probe the reason behind the active probe is to avoid loading the circuit with any additional capacitance or take any current from the from the circuit because this can change uh, obviously how the circuit works so the capacitance of the of the probe should be as little as possible and impedance should impedance should be as high as possible and i'm going to use this popular circuit built uh, around um, bf998 uh, fet transistor um, and uh, that's the circuit already built on the uh, prototype board um, so uh, the PF998 sits here in the middle there is a few uh, resistors and capacitors around it this is um, a voltage uh, regulator 5 volts voltage regulator here is a probe then here I have a uh, coax cable to take signal out of it um, and I'm going to put everything into this highlighter pen enclosure uh, there is already a um, clamp wire with, uh, with a crocodile clamp um, to connect to the tested circuit that's going to be here on the board that's going to take the signal out into the frequency counter and here we have a battery with um, uh, that will provide power supply I decided on battery to minimize the amount of uh, of noise and that's essentially uh, everything that is going to form the a probe and uh, SMA connectors here one for the frequency counter and one for the um, probe itself for the coax of the of the probe in case I want to use probe with something else not necessary only with this frequency counter here we go so that is all the that's my probe that's power supply to the probe it goes here with this gray cable and then with a coax it goes into the PLJ 8 LED uh, frequency counter and that's obviously on the uh, generator uh, oscilloscope uh, is connected uh, to the generator um, here is the oscilloscope and that's the that's what I got on the oscilloscope screen and if you would like to check what's on the output of the probe I need to change this this pin and connect this probe to here so that's the output of my probe and here we can see that it is not as clean as the generator signal there is some noise introduced I, I'm not sure whether it needs to be better screened uh, the ground planes are probably not not ideal the most important bit is it's working and that's the most important bit and it's reasonably accurate so the oscilloscope shows let's have a look 
it settles on 1060. Yeah, it's here, it's exactly the same. Nice. So the whole PCB is wrapped in the isolation tape and then there is just ground um, coming out of the uh, of the wrap. Here is a bit uh, uh, ground wire to connect to the tested, uh, tested circuit and uh, here is the probe. Everything else is wrapped and then I'm going to wrap it in the, uh, in the shield. Uh, including the probe uh, itself, so it is well uh, well protected uh, from any interference. And here is a probe that has been thoroughly wrapped around. It is all ready, put into this um, enclosure, tip, two wires, one is going to be powered by this battery pack uh, that's the wire coming out of here and then there is a coax uh, that ends with the SMA connector. I put a, a little um, female um, socket here, a female connector, just to allow me to attach this better to the uh, um, oscilloscope. Uh, I have oscilloscope ready. I have also one megahertz uh, sine form generator. We're going to hook up a uh, generator to the power supply, 9 volts power supply, and then uh, I'll show you the uh, parameters on the oscilloscope uh, from the uh, generator itself, and then I connect the probe. And I'll show you how it works with the, with the probe, how the oscilloscope curve looks uh, from the probe. I have a uh, generator, signal generator connected to the uh, oscilloscope. Here is oscilloscope and here is what I got on the, on the screen. Uh, it's a nice sine wave and uh, Peak to peak voltage is 2.5 volts and then frequency you can see 1 megahertz. So we have connected the probe to the output of the signal generator. It is connected to the power pack and the uh, end of the coax uh, is connected to the uh, oscilloscope probe. And that's what I got on the screen. As you can see, it's not as smooth as the signal directly from the generator. Uh, but what about the values that we've got here? So frequency is 1 MHz, so exactly like our signal. I'm going to decrease the amplitude from the signal generator and see what's the minimal, uh, what's the minimal sensitivity that we can, uh, uh, we can achieve. So I'm decreasing here. The amplitude and here you can see the amplitude is going lower 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 and it should actually disappear at some point yeah that's the that's the that's the minimum I reached the minimum it's still I can still sort of read it and see it okay I think that's probably the lowest I would see is usable and we have here the peak to peak uh, is 150 on average millivolts uh, and obviously it's going to be a half of it uh, it's going to be um, the peak value so 75 millivolts and one point so it's, 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 it's actually not bad. Let's increase the amplitude from the signal generator and that's what's happening here on the screen. And that's, that's the maximum I can achieve. So the maximum I can get 
is 300 peak to peak millivolts, 300 peak to peak and 150 uh, peak uh, voltage. As you can see the frequency is uh, spot on. Um, yeah, I think I may have a problem here with the power supply. I'm not sure whether this needs to be. Here we go. If I play with a with a lead, it sometimes disappears. So I need to look in into that and get this plug soldiered, uh, resoldered. Well, that looks like it's working exactly as it as it should. Probe uh, connected again to the oscilloscope probe connected back uh, back to the signal generator, and that's what I've got on the screen. And the maximum amplitude that I can get from the signal generator uh, is 3.3, uh, 3.2 volts peak to peak 1.5. Uh, and the minimum, if I turn the knob to the minimum amplitude, here we go. So that is not so nice signal anymore. And we have 680 peak to peak and 320, 340 uh, peak signal. Uh, and that's on the probe. We have 150 millivolts here and 75 millivolts. That was the, 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 the lowest we've got from the from the probe. Nice. Peak to peak, I try to set to 1.5. Yeah, it's 1.5 now. And 750 peak. And I'm going to connect my probe and see what, again, what values I get. Probe connected again to the signal generator. Um, this is exactly as it was before. So 1.5 uh, peak to peak. That's what we said uh, previously. Probe connected to the oscilloscope, and I have clear problem here with the with this plug. It's not. It's not working well. Now oh, it's working better. Okay, I think this plug needs to be needs to be looked at. So I'm not happy with that. Uh, that's what I've got on the on the screen with these settings that we've just sort of like had. Uh, if I remove the trigger, if I remove the trigger, obviously there is a big mess. I put the trigger back uh, on the oscilloscope, and we have so it's 170. We settle on 170. Yeah, so it's one, 170 peak to peak. So we have 1.5 volts peak to peak from the signal generator increase so we get a better, better and nicer signal. I think that is quite nice signal right now. And clearly it is settling here on the frequency much better. Uh, and we have 240 to 70, somewhere between 240 and 270 uh, fluctuating and then 120 peak okay but that's how it how it looks like looks like the output from my from my probe and finally we can calculate the probe gain um, the design says minus 20 dB and it is to a minus 20 dB uh, for 2.4 volts peak to peak um, we got 240 millivolts peak to peak on the output of the probe so it is minus 20 um, dB uh, exactly as uh, as we would expect probe is working uh, hopefully this will allow me to get a accurate um, readings uh, without loading the um, circuit under test uh, 
with the uh, probe with a with a passive probe there is always a risk of uh, introducing a capacitance or um, load uh, current drain from the test from the circuit on the test with this probe the risk is very minimal so it should not alter how the circuit on the test works